So what's going on guys, Kades here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the best settings in Warzone 2. So at the beginning of the video I will show you the best and most optimized settings that will make your game look very good and most importantly will give you the highest FPS possible. Then after that we will look into some common stuttering and lagging problems that some players might run into and of course I will help you to fix them. And then lastly on top of all of this we will go over some window settings that will help you to boost your overall PC's performance and much more. So if this sounds interesting to you then let's get right into it. So then let's move over to the first part which is the display settings. And here we want to select the display mode on full screen exclusive. Warzone 2 runs on DirectX 12. So because of this you can easily and smoothly out tab out of your game. So there is no reason to use anything else. Also if you have a G-Sync monitor and if you're using the default settings. Then some monitors only will be able to use the G-Sync option only when you use the full screen. So just enable the full screen exclusive just in case. Then as for the display monitor and display adapter, keep them a default, which the game should automatically select it for you. Then for the screen refresh rate, put it at the highest number. So I have a 240Hz monitor, so I select the 240. But don't forget that only selecting the highest refresh rate in Warzone 2 won't make the game actually work on 240Hz. So just make sure you open your Nvidia panel, then click on the change resolution and make sure that you have this refresh rate selected at the same number as in Warzone 2. Then for the display resolution keep it a default which is 1920 by 1080 unless you have a 1440 or 4K monitor. Which in that case change the resolution to your monitors if the game hasn't already selected for you. Then as for the dynamic resolution put it at off. Then aspect ratio should be selected at automatic and vsync on gameplay and menu both them should be off. Then custom frame limit should be selected on custom and we want to click on the show more. And here for the gameplay custom frame limit we want to type 300. Then for the menu custom frame limit we want to type 60 and out of focus frame limit should be on 30. So no matter if you have a bad or good PC, all of these numbers should be the same for everyone. We select 300 FPS in the gameplay part because it is the maximum. We won't anyways get to full 300 FPS while playing the game, but at least we let our game know and computer that we want to get as high FPS as possible while playing and then menu frame limit should be on 60. Because while we are in the lobby waiting to match up there is no reason for our computer to be running at full speed. And then lastly out of focus is on 30 FPS. Because when we alt tab out of the game we don't need our game running at full speed. So in a short summary these are the best and most optimized custom frame limit settings. Then as for the restart shaders optimization don't click on this part. Because basically if you ever run into shaders or shadow texture glitches then by clicking this button you can delete and reinstall the shaders pack and hopefully fix the issue. But basically 99% of all players should not touch this. Then display gamma we keep it at default which is 2.2. Then again we keep the brightness at default. Focus mode should be on off. And then lastly the high dynamic range should be on off as well. These two last options called the focus mode and HDR are just new. But for now useless features. That only will make your game more resource intensive without improving anything. So to not run into any problems just keep both of them at off. So now with all of this said, let's take a closer look at the quality settings and this is the biggest part which will affect your gameplay. So first of all we want to keep the quality preset at custom. Then we should have the default resolution at 100%. Then for upscaling slash sharpening we should select the Nvidia DLSS and then we click on show more and select the balance with 82 sharpness. But then for players that don't have the Nvidia graphics cards then instead of the Nvidia DLSS you want to select the Fidelity FX CAS. Many players now have done a bunch of tests and Nvidia DLSS gives the best visual quality and performance. But for players that don't have this option then they should be using the Fidelity FX CAS and then click on show more and select the strength to 75. Both of these two options are amazing and the difference between them is very small but still noticeable. So no matter which one you pick you can't go wrong. But for me and most of you I recommend to use the Nvidia DLSS. Then for anti-aliasing keep it a default which should be on filming SMAA T2X. Then anti-aliasing quality select it at normal. And most likely if you're using the Nvidia DLSS both of these two options will automatically get picked for you. Then for the video memory scale 
we want to slide this to the maximum. So some video cards will have the maximum number at 70, some at 80, some at 90 and etc. Each card and computer will have different max numbers, but basically you just want to have this number as high as possible. And usually the default memory scale on most cards is about 80 or 90. Then moving over to the details and textures. And texture resolution should be at normal. Technically you could put it at low, but only do this if your PC can barely get past 60 FPS. The best and most optimized option is to keep it at medium. But if you really run into performance issues, then select this option on low, but don't go any lower than low. Then texture filter and the cell tropic should be on medium for all computers. Then nearby level of detail and distant level of detail put it at low. Then clutter draw distance, select it at long. This is one of those options which should be on long always. Because if you're using anything besides long, then you won't be able to see enemies from distance. And we definitely don't want that. So then moving over to the next one which is the particle quality. And I highly recommend to keep it at high. This is one of those settings that every player should be able to sacrifice about 2-3% of your FPS for your game not to look pixelated. Then for the particle quality level, this one you want to select on very low. Then bullet impact and sprays, select it on on. This doesn't impact your FPS whatsoever, so there is no reason to disable it. Then for the shader quality, put it on low, desolation put it on off, terrain memory put it on max, and then lastly on demand texture streaming, disable it by putting it on off. Then the next one is streaming quality, and we want to select it on low. Then volumetric quality, we want to select it on low as well. Then the feared physics quality and water caustics, put both of them on off. Then for shadows and lightning, the shadow map resolution, put it on very low. Then screen space shadows, put it on off. Then spot shadow quality, spot catch and particle lightning, put all of these three on low. Then ambient occlusion and screen space reflections, put them at off. Then static reflection quality and weather grid volumes, put both of them on low. And then lastly, NVIDIA reflects low latency, world and weapon motion blur, put all of these four on off. And then film grain, put it at zero. And then last but not the least are the view settings. And these options won't impact your FPS, but are mostly your personal preference. So for depth of field, I recommend to use the max, which is 120. Then ADS field of view should be on affected. Then weapon field of view should be on default. Then the third person field of view should be on 90 and vehicle field of view should be on default as well. Then the first person camera movement keep it at default which is 100%, then third person camera movement keep it at least 50%, then the third person ADS transition, select the third person ADS, and then lastly the default spectator camera, put it on game perspective and that's about it. So then moving over to the next part and if you are using the best settings that I previously showed you and if you are still experiencing lag, stuttering, black screen or low FPS then here I will give you some examples and a few fixes that might help you. So first of all if you are getting weird black screens or stuttering then a problem might be that you have different monitors with different resolutions. So for me I have two monitors, one is 60Hz and the other one is 240Hz. And this might seem extreme, but what fixed for me was to go into monitor settings and make both of the monitors the same resolution. So you right click on your desktop, then click Nvidia panel and here you can see both my monitors. The first monitor is 240Hz and the other one is 60Hz. So in this case we make both monitors 60Hz and this fixed stuttering and random black screens. And now the game feels very smooth. I don't know why Warzone for some reason use both monitors and if they're different types then it gives you different problems. But if you run into this problem then this is how you fix it. Then the second way will specifically fix lag when you're in fights. So what fixed this issue for me was to go to your battle.net launcher or steam. Then at the top here select Warzone 2 then close to the play button click on the settings icon. And first of all click on the check for updates then afterwards if this didn't fix it then click again on settings icon but this time click on scan and repair and then click begin scan and this will do a few second checkup. And if for some reason you couldn't run the game, the game would randomly crash and give you errors, then doing this scan fixed all these issues for me. And then lastly, if you are still running into problems, then I recommend to Google can you run it, and then click on this website. Then in the search bar type Warzone 2 and click the button can you run it. And then in few seconds, this website will show you your PC specs, so then you will be able to see if you even have a good enough PC to play the game. Or if not, then the website will give you specific recommendations on what PC parts you should upgrade and that's about it. And now finally we have come to the last and final part, in which I will quickly show you a few settings and options you want to enable outside of the game, and most players don't have to do this. 
But if you are one of those people who want to get the extra 4-5% FPS boost, then these are the Windows options you want to change. So first of all, make sure that your GPU drivers are up to date. And the way you do this is by searching GeForce Experience and then click on the drivers. Then click on check for updates and if you have the latest drivers then you are good to go. Or if not then download the latest update. Then now let's go to the search bar again and this time type background apps and make sure that this let up runs in the background button is turned off. Then now let's go to the search bar one more time and type power and we will see this power and sleep settings. So then you click on it, then click additional power settings and then make sure that you have selected the high performance plan. Usually every computer's default settings are on balance, but putting this option on high has shown to improve FPS in Warzone. And then lastly, let's go to the search bar one final time and type game mode and a game mode setting should appear. So you click on it, then click on Xbox game bar and make sure that this Xbox bar button is turned off. Then now we select the second setting called captures and let's make sure that again the background recording or any type of recording is turned off. And then let's select the third setting called game mode and this time we want this game mode option to be enabled. And then last but not least, let's click on the graphic settings in the top right corner and enable this hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. If you remember the previous part in which I showed you how to fix the weird bugs and stuttering, here is one last thing you could try out to enable this variable refresh rate and see if this works now. For me personally, this option didn't do anything to my game, but of course you are full free to experiment with this one option as well and that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other good Warzone 2 settings that helped you and might help other players, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. And while you're doing that, please click like, subscribe and enable that notification bell. So this way you could support the channel and you won't miss any more amazing content from me. With all this said, you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. So take it easy. Peace.